Hi, my name is Rodney Berry and I work for the E. Howard Company. My love for clocks developed a long time ago when I was a small child and, and my grandma had a clock that was in the bedroom. I used to stay at my grandma's house. That clock had been in our family for 140 years and I was the only one that ever had an interest in it. And my grandma, before she passed away, said to me, Rodney, I know you're the only one that loved that clock, take that clock. So I had my first clock and I started repairing clocks on the side and buying clocks at auctions and selling them. And it's where my love for clocks started. I just have always fell in love with them. And so when this opportunity came along, to uh, thanks to Alan McCormick, he said, Rodney, would you like to put E. Howard clocks together? And I said, I would love to put E. Howard clocks together. So we started with the name. E. Howard, we had discussions, meetings about what this name represented. And one of the things we decided from the very get-go is the E. Howard name was known with quality, about quality of the clock, and that they had some of the best timekeepers on the market in their day. They obviously started in 1842. So to carry that heritage on, we made this nameplate. And it's not just any nameplate. It's made out of solid bronze. And we wanted the quality to be the standard, not the price. So everything we did, we made as humanly to the best of our abilities, as good as you can make it, choosing the finest materials that we could find to work with. So we started with the name. Next, we go to the heart of any clock. It is the movement. Uh, we didn't want just any movement. Um, we wanted to build this thing to where the craftsman has pride in the product. And how do you do that? Well, you have to have somebody that really loves what he does. And when you sit down and hand turn each one of these little damaskines, this pattern, into this brass, it literally is pulling the handle down and moving the product every single time across all the plates. It's tedious. But when it's done correctly, it really takes on a neat look. And we really like that look. We like that look so much, we even did it to the back plate. And we thought it was just beautiful, so we did it to the back of the back plates. Obviously not necessary, but for us to have that sense of pride that we wanted, we took it the extra mile because we just couldn't do it any other way. This is about what it looks like. This is about how we feel about what it is. We wanted to have great timekeeping, so we used a dead gram escape beatment, uh, escapement. Also, in order to help with wear and longevity, I mean, we got movements coming in that have been in the field for 140 years that are still functioning. What can you buy today that will still be with you 100 years? Not many things, but we had rubies. We took and put rubies in all the high wear areas. And why use a ruby? Well, first of all, that little bit of red shining through is pretty, but most of all, it's rubies are, have porosity, and that porosity does a better job of holding oil. That does two things. One, it reduces wear, and it reduces friction. So therefore, the timekeeping is as good as we can mechanically make it. We also, when we come to putting the screws in, we could have went down and bought some brass screws or some stainless screws or screwed them in there, but it just didn't have the look. And what we mean by the look is that beautiful blue color. It just emulates when it shines in the light. So we made these screws, then we hand blued them, just the way they do firearms. So you can see how that beautiful blue. Also the winding barrel. The winding barrel is highly polished. It's a work of art in itself. And it doesn't need to be, because the cable just simply winds up on it. But once again, it was our craftsmanship mentality that kind of urged us on, egged us on to do it. We just couldn't get enough of making it look beautiful. And it is beautiful. We wanted to bring it up to some new modern technology. Well, right here is the bead adjuster. It has a threaded rod that runs all the way through with a centerpiece. And what that allows you to do, it allows you to simply grab the hand wheels and rotate them and adjust the beat left or right. 
And that's critical to any timekeeping ability of the clock is that to do that. This wasn't on E. Howard clocks. This is a brand new invention for this model. Also, when we shipped this clock, we wanted a way to protect the pendulum rod and the springer, the spring. So we developed a two-piece pendulum system. And the reason we developed a two-piece pendulum system is the pendulum itself weighs 25 pounds and it could easily get damaged in shipping. We didn't want that to happen. So we developed this two-piece system here, you see, and we also didn't want the spring, the blue spring seam to get um, bent in shipping. So that's why we had the capture system developed here. But more importantly, you could take it apart and have to, and be able to um, transport it a lot easier. So we have this sliding barrel that slides over it right here and thumb screws to lock it down. And then the pendulum comes apart. Well, we wanted it to come apart because we could simply send it in the movement like this and send the pendulum in a separate box. So there was a lot of thought that went into that and about making this the best quality we could, including the bob of the pendulum. The bob of the pendulum in the original E. Howard was made of glass tubes that were filled with mercury. Well, mercury is no longer considered safe for humans. So what could we do to mimic that mercury look because we liked the color? So what we did is we took stainless steel rods or round bar and we micro polished them to give that mercury type feeling. And each one of the pieces that capture the mercury, the, excuse me, the stainless steel rods were hand cut on a bandsaw and then hand sanded and hand polished because we wanted each of these parts to be beautiful in their selves. So each one of these little parts were made on a small lathe and then the operator of the lathe made them to what he thought looked nice. So there's some creativity going on here with the work of the lathe, but also the choice of the knurling and the rounding of the knurling, and the points and the elegance of the pendulum itself. As you can see, this is no ordinary pendulum. This is of the utmost highest quality we could humanly make. But we did not stop there. We also, to the pulleys, or the pulley, we were looking for to buy a pulley on the market, but unfortunately the pulleys that we were able to find were of low quality and poor craftsmanship. Uh, the pulleys of the poor quality ones weren't concentric, you can see that this one runs very concentric, nice and square and round. You don't see it wobbling or humping up and down. It spins perfectly. And then also the blued screws. Once again, we made the blued barrels, we made the blued screws. And then this piece were all cut out and these were all sanded and put together. But we took it one step further. We mounted the axle bushing on a bushing, excuse me, the axle on a bushing. Well, why is that? so that it would never wear out your pulley. Once the bushing becomes oblong and needs replacement, has just simply push it out and put a new one in, which will readily have parts for these available. So anybody can do it. Take your screwdriver, take it apart, put a new bushing in, oil it up, you're back in business. And you can see how wonderfully it spins due to the lack of friction and the quality of the machine work. Then the other end, the cable always has another end. And years ago, they used to simply drill a hole in what was called the seat board and run the cable up through it, tie a knot in it with a washer. Well, we didn't like that. So we developed this piece and it has a threaded nut here that has a hole through it. So you simply run your cable through there, tie your small nut knot in the cable and pull it down in there so it's recessed. Then you can have room to slide your cable through and reinstall your nut. And this comes permanently mounted in the clock case. It sticks up against one side of the clock and it holds the cable beautifully. You can see that once again, high polish, extremely thick materials of overkill. You can see how thick and durable this is. This is not lightweight material. This is solid rod. It's not hollow. It's not a piece of pipe. It's solid round bar. 
And also we used a screw to secure it in the back. This thing here is called the cable mule or pulley mule. And it mounts on the side of the clock and basically what it does is it feeds the cable to the winding barrel so that it winds perfectly every time. It has uh, a thread cut in it so that the cable literally moves in and out according to where it is on the barrel of the clock. And that prevents layovers of the cable or bird nesting or anything else that might happen. And not needed, but once again, we wanted just to make it the best we humanly could and that's what we did. We just made this wonderful slave pulley. We didn't stop there. We even took it to the extreme with the hands. Clock hands today are typically plastic or very thin metal. Uh, these are this blue spring, sting, uh, spring steel and it has brass bushings, which commonly they don't have today. But they're very industrial type hands. You can see by the size of the bushings, the quality. And why use blue spring steel? Well, once again, that blue takes on that beautiful reflective blue shade that we just love here. And also, it makes the hands very strong and durable. And why is that needed? Well, when you adjust your clock, you're always rotating it with your finger. So you take a chance of bending it. But this here is very durable and sturdy so that it doesn't bend. It's actually very tough. So it's the highest quality hands that we could produce. There's nothing out there that's any better than these hands. These are the top of the line. So you get super high quality hands that are just gorgeous when you see the light reflect on them. I wanted to show you the E. Howard dial. Uh, the original E. Howard dials were painted and the, some of the higher end clocks had this silver dial. And what we like about this dial is its durability. Uh, we made it out of 40,000 solid brass plate. Then the solid brass plate had the numbers acid etched into it. Now we created this dial ourselves. Um, it's mimicked somewhat after the traditional dials, but yet it's got a little flair from our own creative artist put into this. And then what happens is this whole entire dial gets sanded, then it gets heated, and then each one of these cavities where the acid etching took place is filled in with a black bituminous product. And it takes a long time because you take and you fill it in and you heat it up and scrape it off and heat it in. And you do that a number of times until you get all the little air bubbles out. Then once that's done, the entire face of the clock is sanded. And then we start applying what is referred to as cold silver plating. So it turns the brass into silver or silver plate. And why do we do that? Well, first of all, it's as durable as any dial you can humanly make. You can't make a more durable dial that'll stand the test of time. You can't make a more legible dial. And the reason I say legible is you'll notice that the silver, because of the hand application of cold silver along with the sanding process, creates a real opaque silver color. And what that means is that at any angle, the glare is reduced to where you can f physically see the clock because it's all about seeing what time's on the clock. And you'll see clocks that have a lot of reflection and you can't read them in certain angles where this not only is durable, but is extremely legible. It takes a number of man hours to make this dial. Just to put the black product in there is about an hour and a half. The silver plated is an additional hour. To acid etch it is a different process and to cut out the circles and all the holes is another hour. So this is a very costly, time-consuming product that is as best humanly possible to make. So you not only get a great clock, you get a great dial. Once again, my name is Rodney. I really appreciate you watching the video. And I'd like to invite everyone that has an interest to go to ehoward.com. And there we have other information that wasn't here in this video, but other things that might pique your interest, a little bit of history, a little bit more about the clock, and things of that nature. Once again, thanks for watching.